All right, this is going to be the beginning of a speedrun guide for the game Wizards and Warriors on the NES. Uh, this is going to cover both any percent and all stages, which is the full game uh, versus any percent. Uh, the first two levels are going to be the same, uh, and as a couple of things are going to be the same between the two runs, um, and about halfway through it's going to branch off. Uh, so to begin with that, I need to show off I uh, had to do a potion manip for the very first level, uh, and forgive me, I'll be using Everdrive for this for the sake of save states. Uh, so I'm going to start that up with a hard reset. This is very important. I need to start up Wizards of War with a hard reset every single time that I start a run over, um, because this is the beginning of this potion manipulation. So once I do that, I'm going to hit start, and for this game we start 8 seconds in after hitting start. So we start 8 seconds in, uh, just for whenever uh, Kuros, the knight, once he lands on the tree, that's uh, when we actually start timing. Um, so when I do that, I'm going to hit start and uh, time it at the same time, and I'm going to go to well, about 12, 12 and a half seconds have passed on my timer um, after that 8 seconds. So you could say it's around you know, 20, 21 seconds. So I'm just going to chill out here for just a moment. And then when I do this, I'm going to use a soft reset, so using the reset bus button, versus a hard reset using the power button. So I've got this here at 12 and a half, and then I did a hard, uh, soft reset there. So, get that reset. Uh, and now once I do this, um, here I'm going to make a safe state of it. Uh, when I start this, uh, I'm going to go immediately over to the right into some trees, and there's going to be a pink potion that spawns here immediately because of that reset that we did. This pink potion here uh, allows us to jump up and grab this pink key that's sitting there in that nest that we wouldn't be able to get to right away otherwise without some sort of boost up uh, or by going through the trees. So uh, when we do that, we can grab that tree or that key immediately, and then from there jump down towards this chest here. Uh, so I'll start that over just to show how it looks. I'm going to hold right and A, because you can kind of buffer the jumps in this. And then I'm going to jump off of that small tree, or you can hold and jump uh, off of the the uh, uh, pink eagle that's down there. Um, and you can, uh, if you get a, a jump off of him, it should put you high enough to land up on top of this chest here. Now from here, I'm going to jump up to my right and grab the gem. And then go back down to the left, grab this gem here, jump up to the blue key, and then jump up and go into this gray door. Now the gray door is random, okay, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, depending on what time you're going for, you may that may be a major reset point already. Uh, but for when you're just starting out, don't worry about it too much. Um, so from here, uh, we just have to wait, get that gray door to open. Once we go inside, we just have to fall down in between these, uh, this area here, between all the knots in the tree land on top of this blue chest to get us more gems. From here we just need to jump up to the left, then back over to the right and climb up the side of this tree. And then once we get, you see a knot in the tree, that's when you need to stop because there isn't any more branches on the side. So from here, I need to just jump over to the left, grab this gem, go back to the right. Forget the one gem over there. Pink gems only cost, or give you one gem versus red gems only give you two. So it's not important that we get that pink chest there. So I'm going to go over here and then grab this red chest or a gem here. From there we just have to jump back and forth until we go up to the top. We try and clip the uh, red gem that's right here with your foot and then jump up to the gray door here. Again this gray door is going to be random so you may wait there for uh, several seconds. Um, it may let you out immediately. You may have to come back to it or uh, just wait it out. Uh, it'll be different every single run. Um, uh, and after that point you know, just exit, and then you're gonna... Oops. Sometimes that'll happen too. If that happens, it's probably gonna do it a lot more, so keep that in mind. That's just kind of a weird thing that happens with it. So here, I'm gonna start it over and uh, show you the process up through this point. Alright, so I'm gonna hold right. A, jump up, grab this potion, grab this key, and then grab this chest. I'm gonna jump up, grab the gem, go down to the left, Jump up, jump up again, and then I'm going to wait for this blue door. Uh, you'll notice that I ended up getting a uh, drop here. Um, 
I'll go over those uh, here in a little while at the end of the video to try and give a, uh, a more clear way to find it in the video if someone wants it for reference. Okay, so up the right side, grab this gem, grab that gem, up to the top on the left, and then through the door. Alright, so I'm going to save it once more. Uh, now that I've gone through this door, I, I need to go up to the left and grab the pink key that's, or the chest that's sitting there. Uh, and what's in that chest is going to be the Boots of Force. And in this, or the Boots of Force are hands down the most important item in this game. You never want to lose them because they, for one, will open up any chest in the game without the actual key to have it. All you have to do is run up to it, hit select, which is how you use it, and that's it. You get, oh, it can open up every single chest from there on out. They also are the most important item for doing damage in the game to bosses. They deal three damage versus your sword, which only does one. And then there are some uh, throwing items that will only do two at max. Um, so they are very key to playing this game. So we want to make sure that door is closed. Uh, here we got the Boots of Force. And then we need to find a way now to get up on top of the trees here. Now in order to do that, we're going to have to take a boost um, from a fly, just like that. So in order to do that, or any any sort of flying thing, you know, you can do it from the eagles as well. So you want to wait for a fly, and then you want to use uh, the heel, Kuros, the back side of uh, Kuros' foot. Uh, and when you do that, it gives a hitbox there. The front side does not have any hitbox to it, so don't worry about that. Just focus on jumping on something with this heel. So uh, try this again once that door closes. Now, if you don't have a fly that's there right away, you can also use this blue eagle that's sitting here. So we'll see if I get uh, something like that. Oh, it's gonna be in a weird spot. Okay, so you saw there I bounced off of it. Um, in order to do that, when you usually when you'll exit this door and you don't have a fly that's sitting there, you'll grab the boots, and if you still don't have a fly right away, wait, just do a quick count like one, two, and then just run, jump up to the left, and then back to the right, and just hold down A. At that point, it'll guarantee that you uh, should be able to jump on it. It may take a few tries to get used to where uh, that jump point is. You may fall off of that tree, um, so just give that a bit of practice and you'll be fine. Alright, so we'll get up to the top of the tree. Oh, I'm waiting for another fly. <laughs> oh, okay, that was unfortunate. So I got hit by a fly. That brings up another good point. Anytime that in this game, if you are taking damage, it'll give you invincibility frames, but you cannot deal damage for a certain amount of time either. So at that point, you're kind of out of luck. You can't do a damage boost to get up, or a fly boost in this case, to get up onto the treetops. Uh, sometimes when you're fighting a boss, you won't be able to hit them for another few frames. Uh, so you gotta be aware of that. If you take damage, you won't be able to deal damage. All right, so we got up to the top. We need to grab this here. Now right here, you see that I have 78 gems. Gem count is very important in this game. Uh, every single level will have a certain amount of gems that you are required to get in order to progress. This level only requires 100 of them. Now I have a one gem or two gems above what the minimum is i need to have 100 gems to finish this level out uh 78 is going to be the average for this sometimes you'll get extra drops that'll give you more and uh but as a base we'll just go with the 78 76 is the bare minimum so once you get up to the top of the trees you get that chest you're going to run to the center of this last tree and then you're going to jump up into this secret door now as you can see there are these uh gems that are up here when you have 78 gems, you're going to jump up to the tree knot here on the right, and then you're going to jump over to the right and grab the uh, far gem. Then you're going to jump up to the middle, and then back up over to the left, and then grab the last two gems, and this one will uh, get you your 100 as you go out the door. Now, if you had 76 gems, you would need to grab that last gem there. If you have more than 78, you can grab fewer ones, like you wouldn't have to grab this one all the way on the right side, for example. So you just got to kind of keep track of your gem count as you go. So then we just need to exit, run over to the right side, and jump over, and open this chest with the Boots of Force, so again, we just hit select, and it'll kick open it. Now that gives us the Shield of Protection. The reason that we get this is not necessarily because we need protection in the run, but because in this game, when you already have an item, and you open up a chest later on that would normally contain that item, 
uh, it'll instead give you uh, a chest of gems instead. So at that point, you're getting this shield for the future. Uh, in both any percent and in all stages, this is relevant. Uh, so uh, at that point, now we have 100 gems. Uh, as you can see, the red knight has moved aside. We can go down this tree trunk just by hitting down. Uh, I'm going to go over that once more just to kind of show how it goes. A little quicker. Uh, that's unfortunate. And sometimes that'll happen. Oh, alright, so I got an extra gem there, so we'll just jump up here. Sometimes the secret doors don't quite let you in. 86, wow, that is enormous. Alright, well I'm going to do what I normally do, which is grab all of those and then jump up into there. So I'll run over here open this chest and then I usually like to jump and then go down into the tree all right so now that we are actually in the tree we need to run over to the left side and start falling now on the left side there's gonna be a couple of beehives here I'll make a safe state um, there's gonna be a couple of beehives you pass the first one and the second one as soon as the top of the helmet that Kuros is wearing is level with the top of the beehive you need to start holding right so here I go, and then here's the second beehive here. Hold right. That'll grab me that meat there and land me on top of this chest that gives me the dagger of throwing. The dagger is very important for stages later on uh, because you can actually pick up items using a throwing weapon that are already stationary on the map. Dropped items you cannot pick up this way, but anything that was already on the map, you can. Uh, let's see if I can shoot the gem here. Just like that. So once again, we'll go over to the left. And then hold right as soon as the beehive is pat, like right level with the beehive. Then we're going to go back to the left. And then this is going to take a bit of practice. So you're going to go back once you're in the middle of this fall, alright? Um, I don't really have any visual cues, unfortunately. I know this entirely by feel, so you'll have to give this a little bit of time just to make sure you uh, know when you're going to start uh, moving in this. So the goal of this here is to not stop falling. This is going to be a very long fall. You won't take any fall damage in this game. You'll only get a dizzy animation, but you don't actually take any damage, so don't worry about that. Uh, so as I'm falling, I'm going to go over to the right, then over to the left a bit. You want to try and avoid the tree trunks. We go right again, left, right. Oh, see? Right there. So that's something I want to avoid. Try once more. Go left. And then right, left, right, and then left again, so it's just back and forth. This one you can land on. Uh, because it, if you land, you're basically guaranteed to land on the tree or it's sort of right above me. And at that point, um, it slows you down enough that you're not going to get the dizzy animation. So it's fine to land on this one here. Uh, from there, hold right, go down, and then jump up to the door here. And now you just, it's again a gray door. You gotta, unfortunately, wait for it and hope that it opens on time. Uh, if you get something right away, that's awesome. If you don't, you know, it's up to you if you want to get that reset point or not. But when you're early on, I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that. Uh, just start working through it anyway. Alright, so I'll show this once more. Left, right, left, right, left, and then just fall there. We're gonna drop down, and then jump up, and then just kind of chill out here. Alright, so now I'm actually in the boss fight. This skull, as it is, is actually a big jerk. He can jump around at different heights at any time, um, and so what you want to hope for is that he stays low to the ground. Uh, something you want to do immediately is you're going to try buffering a uh, dagger throw. So when you enter, you're basically going to hold down B to throw the dagger out so that it hits him. As you can see right there, it was completely random as to you know what kind of a jump he did. I didn't move at all, and he just did something different. So... He basically, like I said, all right, there, I killed it with one kick and three dagger hits. The dagger does one damage, uh, so does the sword. If you jump up into him, it'll uh, kill him that way. Um, but then if you can, uh, the best way is to hit him with two kicks. Um, it does take a little bit of practice to be able to kick consistently, because if you mash it, you're not going to get all that well, but uh, if you time it well, you'll, you'll, you'll do very well. Um... So at that point, you're just trying to see what, read what his pattern is, hope that you don't get hit in the process and that he kills you. 
Uh, and after that, after you kill him, you just need to grab the treasure, which signifies that you have actually ended the level. The level will not actually progress. You can't go through the door until you've picked up this treasure. So as soon as you do that, you're right in, and it'll start counting down the gems you have, uh, which is why you want to have exact gems. And that is the end of the first level. Now, um, I'm going to pause this real quick to go over the potions, since I didn't do that at the beginning, just for uh, reference. So there are three potions that you can get have drops of in the middle of the game. You can have pink potions, which allow you to jump higher. You can have blue potions, which increase your horizontal speed. And you can have red potions, which uh, give you invulnerability. Uh, now, pretty much any time that happens, it's going to be a random drop. There are a few fixed uh, potions on a map depending on which level you're in that you can utilize. Uh, but for the most part, anytime you get one of those, it's going to be a random drop. Blue potions are very good, but only on flat surfaces because it only increases horizontal speed. Uh, it doesn't increase vertical speed. Um, so when you get them, you're hoping to get those when it's very flat. You know, you can run for a long distance. Uh, and that will dramatically take down your time if you're able to do that. But um, until then, you know, just yeah, otherwise the route will be the same. There's nothing that like requires you to get a potion in any way other than the manipulation that we do at the very beginning. Uh, and with that, um, let me kill this guy and then let me kill this guy. <laughs> I can't kill this guy apparently. Alright, there we go. And we'll move on to the second stage. <laughs> 